In today's lesson, Anna and I are going to talk about polynomials, and then Steve's going to talk about some of the rules of exponents. I'm going to start by reviewing a couple of definitions you should have learned in Math 60. Then I'm going to talk about what a polynomial is. We're going to go over several definitions related to polynomials, and then we'll look at evaluating some polynomials. So let's start by reviewing a couple of definitions. The terms of an algebraic expression are the parts of the expression that are combined by addition. In the expression 5x minus 2y plus 155, I see some subtraction. I know that the terms are separated by addition, but I can rewrite this expression as 5x plus negative 2y plus 155. This makes it easy to see that the terms are 5x, negative 2y, and 155. A constant factor in a variable term is called a coefficient. The coefficient of negative 5x is negative 5. The coefficient of 3xy is 3. And the coefficient of x, which we can think of as 1 times x, is 1. So what is a polynomial? A polynomial is an expression containing one or more terms added together. That's why we, re we reviewed the definition of terms. The exponents on the variables in each term must be whole numbers. So let's look at some examples of things that are polynomials and things that are not polynomials. 5x cubed plus x squared plus x minus 6 is a polynomial. It has four terms, and the variable terms all have whole numbers for exponents, 3, 2, and 1. 5x to the negative 3 plus x squared plus x minus 6 is not a polynomial. The exponent negative 3 makes this not a polynomial. Next week we'll talk about what a negative exponent means. Negative 1 half x cubed plus x squared y plus 3xy squared minus 7y cubed is a polynomial in two variables x and y. All of the exponents are whole numbers. x to the 1 half plus x minus 6 is not a polynomial. The exponent 1 half makes this not a polynomial, since 1 half is not a whole number. If you take Math 95, you'll learn about fractions for exponents, which we often refer to as rational exponents. 14 is a polynomial. Now some of you might be thinking, isn't 14 just a number? Well yes it is, but 14 is also called a constant, and it's also called a polynomial with one term. Numbers can play several roles. A monomial is a polynomial with exactly one term. A binomial is a polynomial with exactly two terms. You can think of a bicycle with two tires. A trinomial is a polynomial with exactly three terms. You can think of a tricycle, which has three tires. A polynomial with more than three terms doesn't have a special name. So let's look at some examples of monomials, binomials, and trinomials. 3x to the 4th is a monomial. This is a polynomial with just one term. Negative 0.5a squared b to the 7th is also a monomial. There's two variables, a and b, but this is just one term. 0 is a monomial. 2x cubed plus 7x is a binomial. There are two terms here, 2x cubed and 7x. Negative 5x squared plus 9 is also a binomial. 4x squared minus x is also a binomial. 2x cubed plus 7x minus 2 is a trinomial. This has three terms, 2x cubed, 7x, and negative 2. x squared minus 2xy plus y squared is a trinomial. It's a trinomial in two variables, x and y. x squared plus x minus 6 is a trinomial. x minus 6 plus 2x, well technically this has three terms, x, negative 6, and 2x. But notice there are some like terms that can be combined. We could rewrite this by adding x and 2x together as 3x minus 6. So it's not a trinomial, rather it's a binomial. The polynomial x cubed plus x squared plus x minus 6 doesn't have a special name. There are four terms in this, and a polynomial with more than three terms doesn't have a special name. So let's look at some definitions related to polynomials. 
The degree of a term is the sum of the exponents on the variables contained in the term. Let's look at some examples. So in this table, terms are listed in the left-hand column. In the right-hand column, we're supposed to fill in the degree of the term. 7x cubed has a degree of 3. We just look at the exponent 3 on our variable x. 5x squared y z cubed, well this one takes a little bit more work. We have three variables, x, y, and z, so we need to add up the exponents. x has an exponent of 2, y has an implied exponent of 1, and z has an exponent of 3. 2 plus 1 plus 3 is 6. So this term has a degree of 6. 2ab has a degree of 2. Those implied exponents of 1 on both a and b add together to 2. So let's look at another example. In this table, again, we have terms in the left-hand column, and we're writing down the degree of the term. 5x cubed has a degree of 3. Negative 3x squared has a degree of 2. 4x has a degree of 1. And 2 has a degree of 0. All constants have degree 0, except for 0 itself, which has undefined degree. If you think about expressions like 0x cubed, or 0x, or 0x to the seventh, all of those can be reduced to 0. So when you run into 0 itself, it's kind of hard to say that it has degree 0, or degree 7, or degree 5, so we say that 0 has undefined degree. Now let's complete this table for the polynomial 5ab squared plus 3ab minus a squared plus b minus 13. Starting with the left-hand column, we're supposed to write down the terms. So our first term is 5ab squared. Our second term is 3ab. Our third term is the opposite of a squared. Our fourth term is b. And our last term is the constant, negative 13. In our second column, we're supposed to write down the numerical coefficient. 5ab squared has a coefficient of 5. 3ab has a coefficient of 3. Opposite a squared, we can think of as negative 1 times a squared, so the coefficient is negative 1. b has a coefficient of 1. The constant negative 13, we define to have a coefficient of negative 13. What about the degrees of each of these terms? 5ab squared, well, we have to add up the exponents. A has an implied exponent of 1. Adding that to the exponent of 2 on B, we get a degree of 3. 3ab three has a degree of 2, adding the implied exponents of 1 on both A and B. Opposite A squared has an exponent of 2, so the degree is 2. B has a degree of 1. Negative 13 has a degree of 0. Non-zero constants all have a degree of 0. It turns out that the degree of this polynomial is 3. The highest degree term in this polynomial was 5ab squared, which had a degree of 3. The degree of a polynomial is the greatest degree of any term of the polynomial. In this example, I want to find the degree of each polynomial and tell whether the polynomial is a monomial, binomial, trinomial, or none of these. So in the polynomial 7t to the 4th plus 13t minus 5, we have three terms, 7t to the 4th, 13t, and negative 5. So this is a trinomial. So the trinomial 7t to the 4th plus 13t minus 5, what about the degree of the polynomial? We just need to find the highest degree term, which is 7t to the 4th. So the degree is 4. So this trinomial has degree 4. 5x minus 17 has two terms. So this is a binomial. So the binomial 5x minus 17, well, what's the degree of this binomial? We need to look for the highest degree term. The constant, negative 17, has degree 0. So 5x must be our highest degree term. And the degree of the term 5x is 1. So the binomial 5x minus 17 has degree 1.
what about the polynomial 2y cubed minus 8y squared plus 12y minus 5? This polynomial has four terms, so it's not a monomial, binomial, or trinomial. So the polynomial 2y cubed minus 8y squared plus 12y minus 5 is not a monomial, a binomial, or a trinomial. What about the degree of this polynomial? Well, the highest degree term is 2y cubed. So it's a third degree polynomial. Sometimes we refer to these as cubic polynomials. So this polynomial has degree 3. Notice that in this example we just looked at, the polynomial is written in descending powers of y, because the powers of y decrease from left to right. We say that the polynomial is written in descending order. So let's practice writing a couple of polynomials in descending order. So I want to look for the highest degree term. Looking at my polynomial 2x minus 7x squared minus 3 plus 5x cubed, the highest degree term is the 5x cubed. So I'm going to start with that. Then do I have a second degree term? Yes, negative 7x squared. So I'll write that next. Do I have a first degree term? Yes, 2x. So I'll write that next. Sometimes we refer to 2x as the linear term. And then my constant, negative 3, goes at the end. So notice in this one we have a third degree term, a second degree term, a first degree term, followed by the constant. What about the polynomial negative 4 plus 6a cubed plus 3a? What's the highest degree term? Well, it looks like 6a cubed. So that's a third degree term. Working our way down, is there a second degree term? There isn't, so let's move on to our first degree term. 3a has degree 1. So that's the next term I write down. And finally, I end with the constant, minus 4. Now let's evaluate some polynomials. Let's evaluate the polynomial negative 7x plus 5 for x equal to 3. Now you might remember evaluating algebraic expressions in Math 60. This is no different than that. What we're going to do is say, if x equals 3, then negative 7x plus 5 equals, here we're going to substitute 3 for x, so negative 7 times 3, I'm putting the 3 in parentheses to indicate multiplication here, plus 5. Negative 7 times 3 is negative 21, and when we add 5, we get negative 16. Let's do another one. Let's evaluate the polynomial x squared plus 5 for x equal to negative 2. So if x equals negative 2, then x squared plus 5, again I'm going to put my number, negative 2, in parentheses, and the square on the outside to indicate I'm multiplying negative 2 by itself, plus 5. Negative 2 times negative 2 is positive 4, so I have 4 plus 5, which is 9. Now let's evaluate the polynomial opposite x squared plus 2xy minus y squared for x equal to 2 and y equals to 3. So now I have a polynomial in two variables. So if x equals 2 and y equals 3, then opposite x squared plus 2xy minus y squared will be opposite 2 squared plus 2 times 2 times 3 minus 3 squared. Well, the opposite of 2 squared means the opposite of 2 times 2, that's the opposite of 4, plus 2 times 2 is 4, 4 times 3 is 12, 
minus 3 squared is 9. Now before I simplify this, I want to point out a common error that I see. A lot of people, when they run into something like opposite of 2 squared, will say the result is positive 4. If we look at our last term, though, most people will agree that we need to square the 3 before we subtract. The order of operations tells us this. The same thing works with negation. We need to apply our exponent before we negate. That's why we end up with negative 4, which is the opposite of 4. So let's simplify. Negative 4 and negative 9 is negative 13, and when I add 12 to that, I get negative 1. Let's end with an application of a polynomial. The average number of accidents per day in the United States involving drivers of age r can be approximated by the polynomial 0.4 r squared minus 40 r plus 1039. Let's use the polynomial to find the average number of accidents per day in the U.S. involving 18-year-old drivers. Well, we were told that r represents the age of the driver, so we're looking at the case where r is 18. So if r is 18, then 0.4 r squared minus 40 r plus 1039 is 0.4 times 18 squared minus 40 times 18 plus 1,039. These numbers are large enough that I'm going to pull out a calculator to do this calculation. So I need to take 0.4 times 18 squared minus 40 times 18 plus 1,039, and I get 448.6. Now it's obvious that we can't have 448.6 accidents on any given day. There's no such thing as having six-tenths of an accident, but we can have an average, which is what we're asked to find, number of accidents of 448.6. So to answer the question, the average number of accidents per day in the U.S. involving 18-year-old drivers is 448.6. Now I'm going to turn this over to Ann, who's going to talk about adding and subtracting polynomials. In this part of the lesson, I'm going to talk about adding and subtracting polynomials. I'm going to start with a review of combining like terms, and we're going to look at two methods for adding and subtracting polynomials. The vertical method, the horizontal method, both of these methods are just combining like terms, and if we have time, we'll end with an application. So let's start by reviewing combining like terms. So in a previous algebra class, you learned how to combine like terms. Candace actually showed you an example of that in the previous part of this lesson. Adding and subtracting polynomials is nothing more than this. So let's do it. Here we're asked to find a sum. Now we're looking at the sum of two first degree polynomials, 3x minus 2 and 5x plus 3. The parentheses I'm using here are just for emphasis to show that we have two different polynomials that we're adding. So let's do the addition. So 3x minus 2 plus 5x plus 3. I can actually just get rid of these parentheses. And I'm going to do a lot of steps in this first example. I'm going to change everything to addition. So I have 3x plus the opposite of 2 plus 5x plus 3. Use the commutative property to rewrite this. 3x plus 5x, those are my like terms, 
plus negative 2 plus 3, my two constant terms are like terms, and I end up with 8x plus 1. Now, a term of the form ax, such as 3x or 5x, is often called a linear term. So sometimes you'll hear people refer to these as linear terms. Now let's do a subtraction problem. Now the second set of parentheses in this problem are essential because we're subtracting an entire algebraic expression. So let's work through this to remind ourselves why they are essential. So now 3x minus 2 minus 5x plus 3. When I get rid of the parentheses so that I can combine like terms, I have to remember that I'm subtracting both 5x and positive 3. Remember that the subtraction sign outside the parentheses changes the sign of each term inside the parentheses when we remove the parentheses. Now combining like terms, 3x minus 5x is the opposite of 2x. Minus 2 minus 3 is minus 5. Now this problem might also have been stated, subtract 5x plus 3 from 3x minus 2. I'm going to show you an example of a common error. So here's the problem, subtract 5x plus 3 from 3x minus 2. The student writes 3x minus 2 first and subtracts 5x plus 3. The student ends up with the correct answer, just like we did but the student ignored that parentheses are essential. What did he or she do? Well, in the next line, the student acknowledged that we needed to change the sign on the plus 3 to make it minus 3. That's why she got the right answer. But the first two expressions are not equal. They're not equivalent. You can't have 5x plus 3 at the end be the same as 5x minus 3. So the mistake was just in what this student wrote, even though she ended up with the correct answer. So what is the correct simplification of the expression written? So let's look at it. We have 3x minus 2 minus 5x plus 3. What does that equal? Well, 3x minus 5x is the opposite of 2x, negative 2 plus 3 is plus 1. Negative 2x plus 1 doesn't equal negative 2x minus 5. In order for this to be 100% correct, you just need to add the parentheses around the second polynomial expression. Let's now do another sum. We're going to add a trinomial, a second degree polynomial, and a first degree binomial. Here, the parentheses are just for emphasis, so when I write the next line, I can just get rid of the parentheses. And now I'm going to combine like terms. I have only one second degree term, 3x squared, so there's nothing to combine with it. I have two linear terms, x and minus x. That simplifies to 0. Finally, combining the constant terms, negative 1 plus 4 is plus 3. Now let's find the difference. Here, these parentheses are essential. So when I rewrite this expression, I need to change the sign of both terms inside this parentheses, so it becomes minus 4 plus x. Now I'm going to combine like terms. Again, there's just one second degree term, nothing to combine with it. Now I have x plus x, so that's 2x, and finally I'm adding negative 1 and negative 4 to get negative 5. Now we're going to look at a technique that I'm going to call the vertical method. 
In the examples that follow, we will still continue to combine like terms. There's not really anything new going on. But when the polynomials being combined have many terms, it's often useful to have another strategy. We need to sort of keep track of all our terms. So adding or subtracting polynomials vertically is a great way to keep track of the terms when the expression has many terms. The vertical method uses the same principle as adding or subtracting multi-digit numbers. So let's do something we haven't done for a long time. Let's just add two multi-digit numbers the way we used to do this back in grade school. So we have 5,142. What we did is we lined up the hundreds place, the numbers in the tens place, and the numbers in the ones place before we did our addition. We have two ones plus one one, three ones. Four tens plus five tens, nine tens. One hundred plus three hundreds, that's four hundred. Finally, five thousands plus zero thousands, which is five thousand. We get our sum. We're going to use the same principle when we're adding polynomials. So I have here a reminder of what we just did. Now we're going to find the sum of these two polynomials. So the first thing I'm going to do is write the third degree polynomial, 5x cubed plus x squared plus 4x plus 2. Now beneath it, I'll write my second degree polynomial lining up the degree, the terms by degree, or like terms. So here I have 3x squared plus 5x plus 1. Now I'm going to do the addition. The constant terms add up to 3. The linear terms add up to 9x. The second degree terms, you have 1x squared plus 3x squared, that's 4x squared. And finally, 5x cubed plus 0x cubed is just 5x cubed. We've added the polynomials. Let's do another example. Now in this example, I have a third degree polynomial expression and a second degree polynomial expression. In my third degree polynomial expression, I have no second degree term, no x squared term. So when I'm writing this up, I need to think about what I'm going to put there for the second degree term. Let's go back to arithmetic for a moment. We know that 321 does not equal 3021. The difference here is that we have a zero in the hundreds place. So we use zero as a placeholder when we're writing multi-digit numbers. We're going to do the same thing with the polynomials. So I'm going to write the third degree polynomial as 3x cubed plus 0x squared plus 2x plus 1. Zero times x squared is just zero. Doesn't add anything to our first expression. Now lining things up, the second degree polynomial 4x squared plus 2x plus 5. Now I can add these polynomials. Constant terms add to 6. 2x plus 2x is 4x. 0x squared plus 4x squared is 4x squared. And finally, I have 3x cubed. Now, you might ask at this point why we didn't write 0x cubed here. Well, we could have. I could have put a 0x cubed to line everything up. But I didn't write a 0 there in the same way as I wouldn't put a 0 in the thousands place here. But there would be nothing wrong if you did write a 0x cubed here. Let's do some subtraction. We want to find the sum and the difference of these two polynomials. I'm going to start with the addition, and then I'm going to show you some of the differences when we're working with subtraction. So let's do the addition first. I have a fourth degree polynomial for my first polynomial. There's a fourth degree term, a third degree term, a second degree term, a linear term or a first degree term, but no constant term. So I'll just write plus zero. My third degree polynomial has a third degree term, no second degree term, a first degree term, and a constant term. Let's add these up. 
0 plus negative 4 is negative 4. 3x plus 6x is 9x. 5x squared plus 0 is just 5x squared. The opposite of 2x cubed plus 5x cubed is 3x cubed. And finally, x to the fourth plus 0 is just x to the fourth. Now let's work through the subtraction. Now when I write my subtraction, I'm going to start out writing just what I had before. But when I subtract, I need to remember that I'm subtracting this entire expression. So that's going to change the sign of each term in the second polynomial. In fact, the easiest way to do this is just change the sign and treat this as addition. So I have x to the fourth minus 2x cubed plus 5x squared plus 3x plus 0 plus the opposite of 5x cubed. I don't have to do anything with the 0x, but I could write the opposite of 0x squared, just to make a point. Um, the opposite of 6x plus 4. Now I'm going to do the addition. I have positive 4. I have minus 3x. I still have 5x squared. I have minus 7x cubed. And finally, I have x to the fourth. So now let's look at doing these problems horizontally rather than vertically. The horizontal method for adding and subtracting polynomials is just what we did when we combined like terms and more manageable expressions. The difficulty with this method is that when working with polynomial expressions with many terms, we must pay close attention to like terms and to signs. There's just a lot of bookkeeping to do. So I'm going to do one example that's not too much out of control to start. So here I have, I want to do the difference. So I have a second degree polynomial, and I'm subtracting another second degree polynomial. Now when I get rid of the parentheses, I need to pay attention to sign. So I have 2x squared plus x minus 5 minus 4x squared plus 3x minus 1. Now in this example, I just have second degree terms, first degree terms, and constant terms. So combining the second degree terms, 2x squared minus 4x squared is negative 2 times x squared. x plus 3x is 4x, and negative 5 minus 1 is negative 6. Now we're asked to find both the sum and the difference of these given polynomials. We have two fifth degree polynomials here with several terms. Actually, both polynomials have four terms. I'm going to let my computer do the first addition problem so I can show you some convenient bookkeeping techniques that you can use. So I'm going to start by writing the sum. In this case, the parentheses are just for emphasis, so I can rewrite this without using the parentheses. Now I've got a lot of terms here. I know I'm adding fifth degree polynomials. I'm going to start by looking for fifth degree terms. I see that I have two of them. I'm going to add them. Negative t to the fifth plus 2t to the fifth is just t to the fifth. When I'm done doing that, I could lightly cross them out, and I want to do it lightly, just to do, keep track of what I've already looked at. Now I need to look for fourth degree terms. Well, there are no fourth degree terms. How about third degree terms? Well, I have two of them. 4t cubed minus 3t cubed is just 1t cubed. Lightly cross them out. Now let's look for the second degree term. Well, I have just one of them. 1t squared plus 0 is just t squared. The linear terms, I have just one. 
When I'm done with that, I lightly cross it out, and all I'm left with are the constant terms. Plus 6 minus 1 is plus 5. Now, the reason why I had my computer do the crossing out is because I'm writing with a pen. And when you write with a pen, it's very hard to lightly cross out, something you can do with a pencil. And it's just a great strategy for bookkeeping. Now, what you don't want to do when you're crossing things out is to just obliterate the like terms. If you're doing this and you've made a small error, it's impossible to go back and check your work because you can't see what you were working with when you started. So just lightly cross out for your bookkeeping. So now I'm going to do the subtraction problem and show you another way you can kind of keep track of things. So I'm going to take the opposite of t to the fifth plus 4t cubed minus 5t plus 6 and I'm going to subtract 2t to the fifth minus 3t cubed plus t squared minus 1. When I get rid of the parentheses, I need, need to pay close attention to sign. I don't have to worry about the first polynomial expression in my difference, but I do have to think with the second one. I'm subtracting 2t to the fifth. I'm adding 3t cubed. I'm subtracting t squared, and I'm adding 1. Now what I'm going to do to really pay attention to like terms is I'm going to change this to addition and use the commutative property. So I have the opposite of t to the fifth plus 4t cubed plus negative 5t plus 6 plus the opposite of 2t to the fifth plus 3t cubed, plus the opposite of t squared, plus 1. Now I can use the commutative property. I have two t to the fifth terms. I'm just going to write them next to each other to keep track of them. I have no t to the fourth terms. I do have two t cubed terms. I have one t squared term. I have one first degree term. And finally, I have two constant terms. Since I'm running out of room, I'm just going to add 6 plus 1 and write plus 7. Now I'll combine like terms. They're right next to each other. Bookkeeping is easy. I have the opposite of 3, t to the fifth, plus 7t cubed minus t squared minus 5t plus 7. A lot of work? Yes, it is. You can always use the vertical method to keep track of your bookkeeping as well. If you have more success with the vertical method, that's great. Eventually, though, you want to get to the point where you can work these problems horizontally. A couple more examples. Let's state the degree of each polynomial and find the sum. So let's look at our two polynomials here. The first term of the first polynomial has degree 3. Second term has degree 2. The third, degree, the third term has degree 0. This is a third degree polynomial. Here we have a first term has degree 2. Second term also has degree 2. And the constant, of course, has degree 0. So this is a second degree polynomial. So answering the first question, the polynomial x squared y plus 5x squared plus 1 has degree 3. And the polynomial 3x squared plus xy minus 2 has degree 2. Now let's see what the degree of the result is when we find the sum. So now let's do the addition. We're adding x squared y plus 5x squared plus 1. And I'm going to pull out my eraser here. I know the, parent the parentheses are just for emphasis, so I'm not even going to write them. 
plus 3x squared plus xy minus 2. Now I have to look for like terms. I only have one x squared y term. I have two x squared terms. 5x squared plus 3x squared is 8x squared. I have two constant terms. Plus 1 minus 2 is minus 1. I still have this xy term, and there's only one of them. Notice the degree of the sum is 3. The largest degree term is the x squared y, which came from the first polynomial in the sum. Let's do this again. Let's think about the degree of each of these polynomials, and in this case, find the difference. We have a second degree term, x squared, a third degree term, xy squared, a first degree term, and a term of degree 0. This is a third degree polynomial. This is also a third degree polynomial expression. The first term is a third degree term, first degree 0. So both of these polynomials are third degree polynomials. So both polynomials have degree 3. Now before we find the difference, I want to make an observation here. That the xy squared and x squared y are not like terms. They both have degree 3, that's true. But they're not like terms. So we're not going to be able to combine them when we find the difference. So let's find the difference. x squared plus xy squared plus y minus 5, here the parentheses are essential, x squared y, we're subtracting x squared y minus 2y plus 6. When we get rid of the parentheses, we don't have to worry about the first polynomial expression in our difference, but we do have to think when we get to the second one. This is minus x squared y plus 2y minus 6. Let's combine like terms. We only have one x squared term. Remember we said that xy squared and x squared y are not like terms. So I have plus xy squared minus x squared y. Now we have a y term. We have another y term. y plus 2y is 3y. Finally, we have the constant terms. Minus 5 minus 6 is negative 11. We found the difference. One last example. You'll see problems worded like this as you're working through some problems to practice. Here we're asked to subtract 3t cubed minus t squared plus 4t minus 2 from 8t cubed plus 5t plus 3. So what are they asking us to do? Let's think about some arithmetic to make this a little bit easier. Suppose we were asked to subtract um, 3 from 5. I think we could do that. That would be 5 minus 3 equals 2. So when we say subtract a from b, we're going to start with b when we write our subtraction. So let's do it. We're going to take 8t cubed plus 5t plus 3 and subtract 3t cubed minus t squared plus 4t minus 2. What does that equal? Well, we're going to get ready to combine like terms. That's all adding and subtracting polynomials is paying close attention to sign. And now I'm going to combine like terms. I have two 3 degree terms. 8t cubed minus 3t cubed is 5t cubed. I have one second degree term. I just have plus t squared. I have two first degree terms. 5t minus 4t is just 1t. Finally, I have two constants. 3 plus 2 is 5. So we're going to end this part of the lesson here. I'm going to turn it over to Steve, who's going to talk about rules of exponents.